You're listening to The Cash Podcast, creating affluence, success, and happiness with your financial surgeon, Adam Coach, president and portfolio manager at Libertas Wealth Management Group at LibertasWealth.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to an educational edition of The Cash Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about money that is being wasted, lost, and or left on the table by retirees and seniors 65 years of age and older. Uh, but before I introduce what I'm sharing with you today, as always, a few housekeeping items. If this is your first time watching or listening, thank you so much for joining us. The Cash Podcast is produced weekly and as stated in the intro, Cash stands for creating affluence, success, and happiness, and that's our mission. My hope is for you to learn a little bit more on each and every episode so that you become more successful, wealthier, happier, and more educated than you were before you started listening today. So come back often. Feel free to subscribe. We're on iTunes and YouTube, whether you're a listener or a watcher. In addition, you can also follow me on Twitter at Adam Koch and on Instagram at Financial Surgeon. Last but not least, while we're not going to be having any links or visuals today, um, you can always find any educational material that is visual on our website at LibertasWealth.com. Um, but that's it for the housekeeping items. Let's go ahead and get started and allow me to introduce our guest today, Kristen Mazuko. Um, she is an account liaison for Heartland Home Health and Hospice right here in Columbus, Ohio. She grew up in Ohio and graduated from Wright State University in Dayton. And since then, she spent her entire professional career in the pharmaceutical and healthcare industries. Uh, she's volunteered for Pink Ribbon Girls, Dublin City Schools, and she not only volunteers for, but she also serves on the board at Indian Run Preschool. Uh, today, she lives in Dublin, uh, and that's Ohio, not Ireland, with her husband and three kids. Mm -hmm. And if you ever catch her on the weekend, she's likely going to be on the sidelines cheering on her kids during their soccer games. So Kristen, thanks so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me, Adam. It's a privilege. Yeah, for sure. And when, I, when we started talking about doing a podcast together a couple of weeks ago, the first thing that I remember you telling me, and honestly, the the thing that stuck with me the most, and I can't remember what the number was, but you had said something about the percentage of people um, and whether that's, you know, 65 and up or whatever the number was who are literally forced into bankruptcy because of healthcare costs. I, I can't, can you remember, what was that number? Yeah, it is a really shocking, astounding number. Um, those that are 65 years and older in their last year of life, 61% of those people go bankrupt um, and file bankruptcy due to healthcare costs. It, it is absolutely outrageous. That's um, insane. Eight, I mean, 61. Yes, yes. In that last year of life. And that's due to often the things that happen in that last year of life. There is an average of seven hospital visits and stays, uh, average of two to three rehab stays in a facility, average of two home health care um, episodes. So all of those things add up and pile up, ultimately causing a number of people to file bankruptcy. And just basically it's all those costs, whether they come home or not, it just, they just pile up. Right. That's exactly right. Just compound. It, wow. But we'll get into uh, through our conversation about how we can help, you know, save some of that money through some of these services that are available, but yes, it, it's astounding. they the cost of prescription Crazy. drugs alone um, are, are outrageous. Many, many people are completely forgoing even filling those prescriptions because they're too expensive. That's not good. Yeah. I've only heard of a couple of times personally here in our office, but I mean, there's, there's been some crazy numbers in terms, you know, we're called, you know, four digits, you know, thousands of dollars for prescription drugs, which is insanity, obviously. Um, and one of the other things you were, you were telling me uh, before this call today was that hospice isn't what people think hospice is. <laughs> Can you share maybe with our viewers and listeners a little bit about what you mean by that? Absolutely. It's um, hospice used to be a place you went, uh, in fact, a place you went to die. Um, that's what it yeah. used to be. And, and that said, there are places you can go for inpatient hospice. And that's what but I always today, thought it was. Honestly, what did you say? I, that's what I always thought it was. I just thought hospice is where you go and that's kind of the end, right? Absolutely. That's what I thought until I started um, in this role with Heartland and I have learned a tremendous amount about services that are available. Um, so hospice can be a place that you go, but generally speaking, when, when we talk about hospice at Heartland, we're talking about services in the home. And it's not only for your final days of life, which is again, what most people think. They think, oh, they're bringing in hospice 
It's, it's those final days. Um, hospice doesn't mean that anymore. It means that hmm. you can actually live. People think it's the death benefit. We like to refer to hospice as a living benefit because we want people to uh, have the best possible quality of life they can have for however much time they have left. Okay. That makes sense. What would you say? I mean, what, what are some of the triggering events that make it an option? I mean, how do you know whether you do hospice or something else? Sure. It's a good question. And there is a specific criteria um, that a patient must meet to be eligible for hospice. And that, will, that is what we like people to focus on is eligibility. Not okay. am I ready for hospice? Is it time for hospice? But are you eligible? And the criteria for that is if you have a prognosis that is six months or less, if your condition continues on its natural course. Okay. So these people that are in and out of the hospital multiple times, multiple ER trips, I'm in and out of rehab facilities, you know, their condition is declining. If a patient is on a declining trajectory okay. and they have a prognosis of six months or less, they could be eligible for the hospice benefit. That doesn't mean they're only going to live, live for six months. They could live beyond that. We have patients who live for years on hospice or my favorite are those who graduate off of hospice. So right. it, it's never a contract or, or commitment that you have to maintain. Um, hopefully you, you bounce back and recover and you know, you come off of hospice. So even if you keep going beyond six months, let's just say the benefit continues in, in effect, correct? Absolutely. It does. Their patients are reevaluated. Patients are reevaluated um, for eligibility to see that they are uh, continue to have that six months or less prognosis. But um, as long as they do, they can continue on that hospice benefit for infinitely, basically. Wow. And what's what kind of stuff does it pay for? I mean, it's is it does it pay for everything, or are there are there you know catches to this? <laughs> it, people think that they look at me like they can't believe it when I'm talking with them about it. <laughs> but um, the hospice benefit includes. Um, they pay for essential medications and medical equipment that are associated to your hospice diagnosis. So if someone is needing a hospital bed, if someone's needing a wheelchair, a walker, okay. things like that, those things are actually paid for on the hospice benefit. In addition to that, incontinent supplies, which are very expensive, also paid for by hospice. Respite stays for caregiver relief, paid for okay. by hospice. It's a tremendous benefit that, that is not going to cost you a penny out of pocket. This is in a, in a facility and at home or one or the other? Yes. So we provide our services wherever a patient calls home, hmm. whether that is in their home, uh, their family for 30 years, or if it's in an assisted living or independent living facility, a long-term care facility. So we provide our services wherever a patient calls home. Wow. So it's, uh, there's almost, it's almost like there, there are probably people out there going through this who are paying out of pocket for all of these things, liquidating their retirement accounts, their brokerage accounts, savings accounts, when they wouldn't have to be paying for it at all. <laughs> there are, you're exactly right. There are so many options for, for patients to, wow. to continue to main, be at home to help to offset those costs. Um, by taking advantage of that hospice benefit. So it, it really helps to allevi alleviate a financial burden for patients and their loved ones as well. And, and perhaps not to not, I'm, I'm not trying to be morbid here, but it, let's just say it doesn't work out, but also for the beneficiaries and the family and the heirs of that person as well, I would think this Absolutely. almost sounds too good to be true. <laughs> if I'm being honest, it's like, if all this stuff's getting paid for by someone else, and the individual doesn't have to cover any of the costs, then who, is, who exactly is someone else? Who is this, who's paying for this? Right. So you have actually already paid for it. We've all paid for the benefit already. So from the first time we get a paycheck and they take out money for Medicare, this is one of those components they're taking money out for. And so it's a, it's a benefit that you've already paid for. So you're either going to use it um, or you're going to just lose it. So yeah, it, it's something that is already paid for by Medicare. We bill Medicare directly. You never see a bill from Heartland. So you don't, you don't even see a bill. That's a, that was going to be another question. Right. Wow. It's a, it's almost like, um, one of the questions I hear at our office all the time, because obviously we're doing financial planning, retirement planning, estate planning, mm -hmm. investment management is people will say things like, you know, when should I take my social security? 
It's, I mean, it's a, it's a, I mean, so common this question. And oftentimes some people might want to take social security early because they have this idea that, well, you know, cause there's obviously a break even analysis. If you, uh, if you wait to take it later, then you have to live a certain number of years in order for that cost of waiting to make sense. You know, we have to do a break even analysis. And if you wait until 67 or 70, in most cases, that break even is right around 78 or 80 years of age. In other words, you have to live at least a 78 or 80 in order for that, for, for the, the cost of waiting to make sense and to lose that early money. But still, there are so many people who will say, look, I'm worried about it going away, or I'm worried that I'm going to lose it because something's going to happen at the government level or something along those lines. So it's almost like all these years, we've got it, well, all of us have it in our heads that we've been paying social security, paying for social security, paying for social security. But we don't know that we've been putting this money into Medicare to help pay for this other benefit that we don't even know exists, or at least most people don't, I think. No, it, they don't. And if, if they do know that it exists, it's just widely misunderstood. And since starting in this role, I've just made it my mission to, to reach out to the community, to educate as many people as possible as to what resources are available to them. And, and not just yeah. with Portland and home health and hospice, but for seniors in general, there are a tremendous amount of resources available to them that they just don't know are there. Well, and again, I'm glad you reached out to me because honestly, I was, I was a little ignorant to a lot of this stuff. And when we're talking to our clients, whether it be about themselves or their parents, you know, this is something that we're definitely going to be integrating into our planning um, as we go, you know, off into the future. And speaking of clients and, you know, real life stories, maybe would you mind sharing a, a like a real life story or situation you've come across maybe this past year or two um, sure. where hospice was, I don't know, able to help a, a family in some huge manner? Yes, absolutely. And in reference to reaching out to the community, uh, we had done a, a Zoom um, conference panel discussion, much like this. And I had a daughter, uh, adult daughter reach out to me the very next day about both of her parents. Hmm. Um, both had been declining in health. They have been paying private duty caregivers um, to help care for them, despite the fact that she lives down the street and her sister lives across town, you know, they're still, they needed additional help. They have their own families. They couldn't be there all the time. It's not so, cheap either. Yeah. It's not cheap. And I mean, they're, they're blessed to have been able to, to pay for this private duty caregiving, uh, but it was becoming a financial burden and they were starting to worry about how are we going to continue this? And so she reached out to me after learning a little bit more about what we could offer and how we could help and how we could help relieve that financial burden somewhat. Um, so I went and met with the, the daughter and her parents. Um, they originally were just concerned mostly about the, um, her father, but in meeting with them both and talking about the benefits and how they may both be eligible, wow. um, we ended up having them both evaluated by the nurse, found them both eligible, which meant that all the medical equipment, the oxygen that her dad was on 24 seven, the hospital bed for both of them, um, their medications, it's, you know, those inhalers that cost three, $400, they're going to be paid for um, under the hospice benefit. So the, when I was meeting with the daughter, she just kept thanking me over and over again. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is amazing. And we're so grateful. And now we're going to be able to free up funds by, you know, you covering the incontinent supplies. It's going to be a tremendous help to be able to put that money towards the, the private duty caregiving. So it, it really, truly um, is a gift that we are able to share with people. Again, I'm, I'm, you know, an account liaison, more appropriately named like a patient navigator, getting people in touch with the appropriate level of care that they're eligible for and, and, and what is appropriate. Um, and she okay. was just incredibly grateful. Okay. Well, I mean, it sounds to me, I mean, it sounds to me like a lot of people out there are probably leaving money on the table all while wasting money on prescriptions. I hate to say wasting, but I mean, they, it would otherwise be paid for, you know, medical devices, things like canes, beds, walkers, um, when they wouldn't have to come out of pocket for any of it if right. they were just aware that they've been paying for this benefit their entire lives. I That's don't know. That's exactly right. Wow. Okay. Well, 
we're uh, you and I um, are technically it's it's mostly your article that you wrote. Um, you just uh, we're going to be sending out an article uh, about this same in well same information a little bit more uh, in detail, and that's going to go out to everyone either in, probably next week. So for those of you listening or watching, if you're interested in getting that article, just head over to our website at libertaswealth.com and uh, we'll make sure that you're on our distribution list so that you get that letter as well as other updates on uh, podcasts and things like these. Um, but before before we close out here, Kristen, if, if anybody wants, well, has questions or just wants to get some more information, is there a best way to contact you? Absolutely. They can just reach out to me directly um, via phone. And that number is 614-296-6049. And that is my work cell. So I'd be happy to talk with anybody about services, even if, if they're not at that point yet. It's always helpful to have that knowledge and be equipped with that knowledge before you're in crisis, because oftentimes people wait until they're in crisis and then it's panic mode. Yep. So if, if you have that knowledge ahead of time, it, it is you know, knowledge is power. So having all of that ahead of time is helpful. We just became closer friends because I'm always saying that we don't wait till you step on a mine to plan for it. You <laughs> right. want to walk through a minefield without a plan. And I think that that's, uh, I think that that's great advice. You always uh, know, as the old cliche says, you know, nobody plans to fail. They just fail to plan, right? Right. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, no, that's great. Uh, great advice. So if anybody wants to reach out to Kristen again, that number is 614 296 6049. Um, you can also email her, but we'll publish the email address um, on the YouTube page uh, just below the, the, the video. So if you want to email her, we'll put that down there as well. And if you don't catch that, feel free to email us at info at libertaswealth.com and we can provide you with contact information as well. But uh, otherwise, that's it for today's show. Feel free to share this episode. And I think there's a lot of great information in here today that, uh, that should be shared with as many people as humanly possible, because I really do feel like so much of this information is not so well known. And if you'd like to discuss your personal situation further, whether it has to do with this um, or financial planning, retirement planning, estate planning, uh, please know that you never, ever, ever has to have to be a client to ask a question. Um, if you'd like to set up an introduction call or Zoom meeting, just head over to our website at libertaswealth.com on our contact page, and you can get access to our calendar there. As always, I always say there's thousands and thousands of podcasts out there these days, and you chose to give ours a listen today. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to, again to subscribe on both iTunes and YouTube. And remember, you can sign up at libertaswealth.com to get not only these updates, but our other screencasts, videos, and articles delivered directly to your email inbox as soon as they are distributed. Uh, feel free to follow us on Facebook, at uh, facebook.com forward slash Libertas Wealth. Again, I'm also on Twitter at Adam Koch, as well as Instagram at Financial Surgeon. Uh, Kristen, thank you so much for joining us today. This was great information. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. For sure. You're so welcome. And then uh, to our guests, thank you so much once again for joining us and we see you next time. Thank you for listening to The Cash Podcast with your financial surgeon, Adam Koch. To see any charts or images that were mentioned in this show or to check out additional articles, videos, and other educational resources, head over to LibertasWealth.com.